Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. In this video we're going to uh, tackle Further Pure 2, the FB2 course, and we are doing Chapter 2 which is on series and we're using the method of differences. As always, for more help with your GCSE or A-level, do check out YouTube, Twitter or Google+. Okay, just to uh, see where we are, um, this is the third tutorial for FB2. It's on Chapter 2 in the book and it's uh, we're dealing with series. Um, so sigma notation, and we're using what's called the method of differences. Now this is, should be applicable to most further pure maths modules. Just looking at the syllabus, um, this is the second chapter that we're going to do, and we have to do series. And what we have to be able to do is sum up simple finite series using the method of differences. Students should be able to sum series such as the following uh, by using partial fractions such as that. So this is the very first example we're going to do. So, uh, just to explain what the topic is, let's take a look. Um, we're going to be summing up series. Now, this thing here is called series. Okay, It is a sum, a sum of various terms. So we're going to be working things like this out, and we're going to be using a new method that we haven't met before called the method of differences. And here's our aim. The expression that we're summing, this is the expression we're summing, um, it's called the sum and. Okay. Now, this sum actually means if you just uh, work it out, if you put 1 in first, it's 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 4, etc. plus dot 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 all the way to 1 over n, n plus 1. So that's by putting r is 1 in here, then r is 2 in here, then r is 3 in here, all the way up to r is n, finally. That's what we want to work out. Now, if we can express the sum and, the expression we are summing, as a difference, and by difference I mean subtraction, and it turns out we can express the sum and as two terms subtracted from each other, as follows, these two things turn out to be equal, then it makes working the sum out much easier than trying to work the sum out of the original expression. So that's what we're trying to do. If we can write the sum and here as a difference, and by difference I mean a subtraction of two terms, then it turns out that we can work out the sum with pretty uh, fairly easily. Okay, so straight to an example, and this one, why not? So here's example one. Firstly, we're asked to verify that 1 over r multiplied by r plus 1 is the same thing as 1 over r subtract 1 over r plus 1. This is an easy uh, exercise in algebra. Okay, so why don't we start off with, let's say, the right-hand side. So the right-hand side, we have 1 over r subtract 1 over r plus 1. Now, if we want to work that out, make the denominators the same. Multiply this one by r plus 1 on top and bottom, so we get r plus 1 over r, r plus 1. And multiply this one by r on top and bottom, so we have subtract r over r, r plus 1. Now we can... Uh, actually subtract these fractions because the denominators are the same. So we have r plus 1 subtract r all over r, r plus 1. And that is, of course, 1 over r, r plus 1, which is identical to the left-hand side here. So we have done. Nice and simply proved what we're trying to do. Okay, now let's go on to the next bit. Hence, work out this. So we are trying to work out the sum from r is equal to 1 to n of 1 over r, r plus 1. Now, what I would like you to do is, this is our sum and here. We are going to write the sum and as a difference. You In the early part, they, these two things are the same, and it's much more useful to work out the sum for the expression that's a difference. So we're just going to write this sum out, but instead of the sum and we had before, we're going to write the exact same uh, thing of the same value, but it's written as a difference. So 1 over r subtract 1 over r plus 1. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there. Now we're going to write this out nice and carefully, and I'll show you why it helps us. If we put r as 1 in, 1 over 1, we get 1 over 1, subtract 1 over 2. And then we're summing, so we're going to add, we put 2 in, 1 over 2, subtract 1 over 3. And then we're going to add 1 over 3, subtract 1 over 4. And we're going to keep on adding until we get to our final term when we put n in, 
1 over n, subtract 1 over n plus 1. Now, hopefully with a little bit of luck, you can see why this is helping. If we look here, this subtract 1 over uh, 2 is this, uh, matches this plus 1 over, and over two, 1 over 2, and they cancel. This negative 1 over 3 matches this positive 1 over 3, and they cancel. And similarly, this negative 1 over 4 will match a positive 1 over 4 here. So it turns out that these diagonals always cancel each other out. Okay, so the 1 over n will be cancelled out by a negative 1 over n. And all you're left with at the end of all this, well, the, the only terms that haven't cancelled is the first term, which is 1 over 1, which is 1, and the last term, which is subtract 1 over n plus 1. And there we go. That now is our sum. So the sum from r is 1 to n of the original thing, 1 over r, r plus 1, is actually 1 subtract 1 over n plus 1, which we can write over a common denominator if we wanted to. We don't have to, but that's n plus 1 over n plus 1, subtract 1 over n plus 1, making this over n plus 1, which is equal to n over n plus 1, and we're done. So you can see by writing uh, the sum and here as a difference instead, it meant that various terms cancelled, we were left with the first term and the last term, and hence we could work out and evaluate that sum. So there's our first example. Let's try one more. Part A, show that the following is true. So this again is an easy algebra exercise. It's always easier to start off with the more complicated side. So let's start with the right hand side. The right hand side is r squared, r plus one squared, subtract r minus one squared, r squared. Now, a clever thing to do here, before you start expanding out, notice that there's an r squared here and an r squared here, so we can factorize and we would be left with inside the brackets r plus 1 squared subtract r minus 1 squared. And now we can expand this thing out. r plus 1 squared is r squared plus 2r plus 1, and we're going to subtract this squared, which is r squared minus 2r plus 1. And clearly, you can see that there's some cancelling here. We're going to have an r squared cancelling with that uh, r squared. 2r subtract, negative 2r is 4r, and the 1s are going to cancel. So we're just going to get ourselves r squared multiplied by 4r, which is 4r cubed, which is what we wanted, namely the right hand, uh, the, the left hand side, sorry. So we have shown that. Okay, so that was a nice, easy first part done. Okay, I'm just going to uh, shrink this and make this a little bit smaller just so we've got more room here. So we've done the first part nice and easy. Let's go on to part B. So part B, we're trying to work this out here. So we're trying to work out the sum from r is 1 to n of r cubed. Now we know that it's better to work this out as a difference. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to actually write the sum and the r cubed as a difference, i.e. what we showed in part A. So it's the sum of r squared, r plus 1 squared minus r minus 1 squared r squared. So now we're going to write out various terms to see what cancels. If we put 1 in, we have ourselves the following. We're going to have 1 squared, 2 squared, subtract 0 squared, 1 squared. And then you put 2 in, and you're going to have 2 squared, 3 squared, subtract um, 1 squared, 2 squared, and you're going to put 3 in, and you're going to get 3 squared, 4 squared, subtract um, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so on. So you go down, you put the last thing in you put in is n, so you put in, uh, you're going to get n squared, n plus 1 squared, subtract n minus 1 squared, n squared. Now hopefully you can see with this that something's cancelling. So you've got the 1 squared, uh, uh, 2 squared, and that's cancelled with this negative 1 squared, 2 squared. And you're going to have the 2 squared, 3 squared, and that's cancelling with the negative 2 squared, 3 squared. So these are always cancelling diagonally this way this time. Okay, So you always cancel diagonally in that direction, so that will cancel. And the only thing you're left with is this term here, which is actually nothing, because 0 squared is nothing. 
and you're going to be left with this last term here. So you're going to get yourself n squared n plus 1 squared. Okay? Now, um, one thing uh, I, for I forgot to do here, there was a tiny little error. Um, this thing here, 4r cubed is, is equal to that. Sorry, by my identity, 4r cubed is equal to this thing here. So if at the end I just want 1r cubed, I divide by 4 and I get a quarter n squared n plus 1 squared. And I'm done. So they're the two examples I would uh, like you to try for now. Now, for, the, for homework, I'd like you to read the rest of the chapter, page 12 to 17. Exercise 2a, you'll eventually have to do all the questions, but for now, do 1, 2, 3, 6 and 7. Then tune in for the next video. Thank you for watching.